Just last week, I came across this stunning landing page featured by GSAP as their site of the week on Twitter. And honestly, the moment you land on this site, it's easy to see why. This intro animation is incredibly well crafted with cool kinetic text animation and a smooth image reveal that work together seamlessly. I thought it would be a fun challenge to try and recreate this experience from scratch using GSAP. As you can see, I was able to get pretty close using some simple GSAP instances and a bit of split type magic for the text animations. In this video, I'll walk you through the entire process from setting up the structure to animating each element with GSAP. It's a slightly longer video than usual just because there are a bunch of small coordinated animations happening but I'll cover everything step by step so you can follow along easily. If this kind of content helps or inspires you, it would really mean a lot if you could give the video a like and even subscribe. That small support goes a long way for the channel. And if you want to access the source code for this project, along with hundreds of other animation experiments, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. For this one, I've also tried to keep the layout responsive just so it looks clean on both desktop and mobile. Alright, let's dive into the code and break it all down. Let's kick things off by setting up the basic HTML structure for the landing page. We'll start by creating the black overlay section, which will be split into three columns. Projects on the left, the logo in the center, and locations on the right. Inside the projects column, we'll just add a simple header with the column titles for now. The full project list will be injected later with JavaScript to keep our HTML clean. For the logo in the center, we are using two separate H1 elements, one for each line. This makes it easier to animate them individually with GSAP later on. Similarly, in the locations column, we are just placing a header using a paragraph tag. Again, the full list of locations will be added dynamically using JavaScript. Next, we move on to the image grid. This will be made up of three rows and each row will contain three image wrappers. The images themselves go inside these wrappers and will apply all grid animations to the wrappers, not the images directly. The middle image in the second row is going to be our hero image, so we'll give it a special class called hero image. Then comes the navigation bar. Just like before, we'll divide it into three parts, links on the left and right, and the site logo in the middle. After that, we add two banner images. These will be revealed on either side of the hero image when the animation plays. Each of them will have unique class names, so we can easily target them with GSAP. Finally, we'll add our text elements, two H3 tags for the sub addings inside a wrapper called intro copy, and then one main H1 tag at the bottom of the screen that serves as the page title. And that's our basic HTML setup done. Next up, styling it all with CSS. We'll start with a universal selector. We are resetting all default browser styles by removing the margin and padding and setting box sizing to border box. Next, we define the base styles for the body. We are using a clean sensory font and giving it a gray stone background. For images, we make sure they fully cover their container using width 100%, height 100% and object fit cover. We also style all paragraph tags to use uppercase text and a monospaced font with a smaller font size. Same goes for anchor tags, we remove the underline, make the text uppercase, set the same monospaced font and make sure the color is black. Now we style the black overlay that appears on load. The overlay is position fixed, covering the entire viewport width and height. We give it a black background, white text and apply some padding and spacing with gap. We use display flex to align three columns side by side and hide any overflow. Each section inside projects, loader, locations gets flex value of one to equally divide the space. They are all vertically centered with justify content center and spaced out using some gap. The loader is horizontally centered as well using a line item center and we remove the gap between the two lines. Inside the loader, we style the heading using a bold italic font. It has a nice gradient feel using a background clip text with a transparent fill color that layered the text effect. We also define a gradient that blends dark grey with white to prepare it for the animation. Next, the headers and the item rows 
inside projects and locations are initially hidden using opacity 0. They are styled with display flex and some gap and we set a flex one on their child elements to evenly distribute them. We also center the location section horizontally. Both project item and location item get a muted text color to help distinguish them from the headers. Now the image grid, we center it on the screen using position fixed and transform. We limit the width to 30% with a 1 by 1 aspect ratio. Inside, we stack 3 rows vertically using flex direction column and space them with some gap. Each grid row displays 3 images side by side using display flex and a consistent gap. Every image wrapper maintains a square shape with aspect ratio set to 1 and we use a clip path to hide them initially. This is important for the reveal animation. Moving on to the navigation bar, we use position fixed and full width with padding and horizontal spacing. Each section inside gets equal width using flex 1. Inside links, we align and space out the links using justify content space around. The center logo in the nav is styled with a bold italic font again and slightly larger font size. Now let's style the two banner image elements, we position them absolutely and center them using transform. They start scale down with transform scale 0 and will animate in later. Each image has a portrait ratio using aspect ratio 4 by 5 and a fixed width of 20%. For the intro copy, we position it in the vertical center of the screen and stretch it horizontally with padding. We align both H3 elements on the left and right using justify content space between. The title block is placed near the bottom center of the screen, positioned absolutely with the transform to align perfectly. Now for the typography styling, both the H3 and H1 elements get uppercase letters, the same font, italic style and a bold but clean appearance. The H1 gets a larger font size while the subheadings have a smaller one. We also apply clip path on both to control how the text animates in. Each word inside these elements has its own inline wrapper with the word class which will animate individually. We make sure each word is inline block and uses will change transform for smooth animations. Finally, I will add some responsive styles with a media query for screens below 900 pixels just to make sure the layout looks clean on smaller screens too. To keep our HTML clean and dynamic, I have created an array of objects. Each object represents a project and includes three key properties, the project name, the director and the location. We'll use this data to dynamically generate and append both the project list and the locations list to the overlay instead of hard coding them into the HTML. This makes our code more flexible and much easier to manage, especially if we want to add or change items later. Now let's start scripting the animation logic. First, we import GSAP along with two plugins, Custom Ease, which allows us to create easing curves and split type, which helps us break text into individual words for precise animations. We also import our dynamic projects data from a separate file to keep everything modular and organized. Next. We register the custom ease plugin and define a new easing curve called hop. This will give our animations a cool power easing effect. Then we wait for the DOM to fully load using DOM content loaded event to make sure all our elements are available before we run any animations. Inside the event listener, we start by grabbing a few key elements from the DOM. To keep things clean, we create a new array called images which filters out the hero image. This way we can animate the rest of the grid separately. Then we use split type on the two text sections, the intro copy h3 elements and the main title h1. We are splitting them into individual words so we can animate each one independently later on. 
Now for the image logic, we create an array called all image sources using arrays from method and generate a file paths for 35 images dynamically. Finally, we define a utility function called getRandomImageSet which shuffles the image paths and returns a random set of 9 images. This is what we'll be using for looping image swap effect. Now let's populate the overlay with the content dynamically. Inside the initialize dynamic content function, we loop through the project's data array using for each method. For each project, we first create a new dev element with the class project item. Then we create two paragraph elements, one for the project name and one for the director's name and insert their values from the project data. Once both elements are created, we append them into the project item and then inject that into the project's container in the DOM. We repeat a similar process for the locations. Again, we loop through the same data set, but this time we only create one paragraph element per project. This holds the location name. Each location name gets wrapped inside a div with the class location item and we append it to the location's container. This setup keeps our HTML file clean while giving us full flexibility to manage and animate the content with JavaScript. Next, we set up the rotating image sequence that plays at the beginning of the animation. Inside the start image rotation function, we define a variable total cycles and set it to 20. This will control how many image transitions will cycle through. Then we use a for loop to repeat the process 20 times. Each cycle is slightly delayed, so images switch at intervals. Inside the animation callback, we loop through each image wrapper and update the source of the contained image element using the randomized image set we created earlier. There is a special condition for the final cycle. If we are on the last iteration and the image is the hero image, we finally set its source to the fifth image and scale it up slightly for the parallax effect. The entire sequence creates that fast paced cinematic flickering of images that leads right into the main page reveal. Now let's set up the initial states for all the elements we plan to animate. Inside the setup initial states function, first we hide the navigation bar by moving it completely off screen vertically using Y set to minus 125%. Then for the split text, both the intro subheadings and the main title, we push all the words downward by 110% on the Y axis. Next, we have the init function. This is our initializer. It ties everything together. We call initialize dynamic content to inject the projects and locations into the overlay. Then we call setup initial states function to prepare all elements for the animation. And finally, we trigger create animation timelines, which will dive into next. This is where all the GSAP timeline magic happens. The init function runs right away after it's defined, making sure everything is ready to go the moment the page loads. Now it's time to bring everything to life with GSAP. Inside the create animation timelines function, we break the animation into three separate timelines, one for the overlay elements, one for the image grid and hero image reveal, and one for the text transitions. We'll start with the overlay timeline. The animation begins with logo line one, revealing the first part of the logo by changing its background position and color. Once that completes, we animate logo line two in the same way, Next, we fade in the project and location headers, followed by the respective items, all staggered for that smooth cascading effect. Then, we animate the color of each project item and location item to white, giving them a glowing, in-focus feel. After a short pause, we reverse that, fading both sections out again to prepare for the overlay exit.
Finally, we fade out the entire overlay container, clearing the screen and transitioning us to the main reveal. Next, we move into the image timeline. This is where the grid transformations kicks in. First, we animate the clip path of each image to reveal the image styles and we delete the sequence slightly to sync with the overlay fade out. Right as this starts, we trigger the start image rotation function. This fires up the rapid image cycling. We also fade out the loader to keep things clean. Then, once the image flickering ends, we animate all images except the hero one back to their hidden state using clip path again. We then gently move the hero image upward, giving it presence and focus. After that, we scale up the hero image and apply a new clip path to emphasize it in the center. At the same time, we animate its inner image back to normal scale for a smooth parallax effect. While that's happening, we also scale in two banner image elements. The navbar slides into place from the top, making the whole layout feel complete. We also animate the banner image outward. Each one rotates and shifts horizontally, further enhancing the sense of motion. Lastly, we move into the text timeline. We animate the main heading words back into view by shifting them from below. Each word animates with a slight delay. Then, the intro subheadings follow right after, completing the reveal sequence. And that's the entire animation flow from logo to overlay, grid to hero image, banners to final text. Every timeline works together to create that smooth cinematic entrance we saw in the original inspiration. So, that was it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.